Hey everybody, welcome. We are so glad that you're here with us today. We are kicking off a brand new teaching series called How to Echo. On top of that, today is a very big day because we are celebrating Crossroads Church and Echo Church becoming one. This represents literally years of praying about our future together. And earlier this week, I had the privilege of sitting down with Pastor Paul and Pastor Karen, who founded Crossroads Church 25 years ago when I was just two years old. We got to hear their story, and then we also got to hear from Pastor Lucille, who's the campus pastor of our Fremont campus, which is moving over to the Crossroads location. I thought you would love to hear this conversation. I think it will encourage you as we celebrate this moment together. Hey everybody, I am here today with Pastor Paul, Pastor Karen, and Pastor Lucille from the Fremont campus. And we're so excited because today marks a very monumental moment. Uh, It marks 25 years of faithfulness of Crossroads Church and Crossroads and Echo, two churches officially becoming one church. Awesome. Awesome. And I can't believe it's been 25 years, but 25 years ago, we knew that God called us to start a church that would lead seekers to love Christ, love others, and live life on purpose. And when we started, we had no people, no money, no place to meet, but we knew God called us to start this church. And so we said, yes, yes, Lord, we'll do our best and trust you for the rest. And after we said, yes, that's like, that's when God opened the door for all these miracles to start happening. Yeah, and we started seeing God affirm and confirm that call and his plan for this church by providing the people, the places to meet, and the funds that we needed. I remember our first service at the Super Saver Cinemas, and uh, that was a beautiful place to start start. with a great name. And we didn't have anybody, we had very few people in the room when we started the service. We sang a couple worship songs, and then we turned around, and to our surprise, the place was packed. And that was just the first of many times that God showed how he was going to provide. And if God God guides, God provides. And so he did that. And when we outgrew the Super Saver, we went to another movie theater. When that was about to be turned into a PetSmart, we had an insider tell us it was about to be demoed. So Irvington Baptist Church was so gracious to unanimously say yes and allow us to not only meet here, but eventually to give us the building and the property because they saw what was happening on the campus, people coming to know Christ. And they said, that's always been our dream and that's what we want to see happen here. So they so generously um, did that and gave us that gift. And then we outgrew this property as well, having multiple services and... And it just, here's what I want to say. That's part of Irvington Baptist Church's legacy when they gave us the property and we went from two to three to four services. And then we knew we could no longer add services. So our people so sacrificially and generously gave so that we can build this new worship center. And uh, we knew it was bigger than just us, like a long part of our history, is we helped start 10 other churches along the way. And that kind of leads us to how our relationship started just yeah. over 10 years one, ago. One of the things I've always loved about Crossroads Church is the generosity of the people of Crossroads and the heart not just for Fremont, but the entire Bay Area. And when we had our first conversation, we sat down for some Chinese food. Right. And when we were processing, Stacy and I were looking at, did God want us to start a church in the Bay Area? And God used your words in that conversation to lead us to say yes to Jesus and yes to the call that he had placed on our lives. And if you fast forward a couple of years, God began to change a lot of lives through what he was doing at Echo. And there were literally hundreds of people from Crossroads that came over, setting up, tearing down, being a part of that vision. So we got our start because of you. And one of those lives that was changed in the early years was Lucille. Yeah, actually, I'm a Bay Area native and I was invited to come to church at the time that um, it was meeting at a school, actually. Yeah. We didn't even have any buildings. And it was it was so new to me. I've never experienced anything like it before. And because of your yes, and then you helping Andy, Pastor Andy and Stacy, um, I was able to say yes. And a few years after coming, I gave my life to Jesus, got baptized, and fast forward seven years, here comes 
you know, Mission Springs and then another opportunity, yeah. which totally changed my life. I mean, everything before that, I just want you guys to both know how much I appreciate all of that, everything that you did before that moment. Um, and it's amazing. It, my whole life is totally different because of it. And it not only changed your life, but now God's using you to change so many lives. Yeah. And now we get to be pastors together. I mean, it's a, it's a it's total full God story. It's amazing. And it's interesting how even in the midst of this whole story, there was a church in Fremont called Mission Springs that had actually approached us and said, hey, would you be willing to take us on as a partner church to make us a campus? So that became the, the Fremont location of Echo. That's where Lucille was the campus pastor. So Lucille said yes to not only follow Jesus, but to lead and to be a campus pastor. That church said yes. As we were processing this decision, one of the things we realized is that the Fremont campus was less than 10 minutes down the road from Crossroads. And you and I then had a conversation. Yeah, Andy comes in my office and very humbly said, hey, would you guys be open to Crossroads and Echo partnering together and becoming one church? And uh, I, was, I was blown away. And it began a year long process of praying and seeking God and uh, included our staff, our council, our leaders. But one year later, unanimously, we voted to become one with Echo Church. And we've been moving forward with this date and then COVID hits and uh, we weren't able to celebrate the way we wanted, but we still felt like this is such a God thing that we have to move forward with what God asks us to do. And so that brings us to this day. Yes, and I wanna say thank you. Thank you to you, Paul, and you, Karen, for your faithfulness, mm -hmm. for 25 years of pouring out your lives and all the lives that you have touched. God has used you in such a powerful way. Thank you, Crossroads Church, for all the sacrifices that you've made, for saying yes to Jesus and following Him passionately. Thank you to all of you who were once a part of Mission Springs, who said yes to Jesus to be a part of Echo. Thank you, Lucille, for your faithfulness to follow Jesus and be a part of this vision. And I want all of you to know that Stacy and I do not take this decision lightly, especially you entrusting Echo with what you've built over the last 25 years. We wanna honor your legacy, and we believe that because of your yes now, that together we're gonna to see thousands of yeses, thousands of lives changed, and the best of what God wants to do is in front of us. Amen. Hey, I wanna say one last thing because this is hot off the press. Hey, for the seventh year in a row, uh, Crossroads received the best community church award and it's not really my award, Crossroads, this is your award. And I wanna say thank you for all the ways that you have fed the hungry, helped the homeless, delivered backpacks, sacrificed to build this church. And I wanna, it makes me think of what the Bible says in Romans 6.10, that God is not unjust. He will not forget all the love and hard work that you've shown to care for one another as you continue to do. So God won't forget what we've done to this point, but as we continue to move forward, I know it's gonna result in more people saying yes to Jesus and passionately following him. And that's what excites me the most about this moment. And if we were together physically right now, we would have confetti cannons going off and we'd be <laughs> celebrating together. Uh, but since we're digital, we can still clap and celebrate. Amen. So put a Woo! clap right there Woo! in the chat. Amen. Praise God. Hey, you can clap at home too. It might feel a little bit weird. Nobody else is in the room with you, but you can put those hands together because today is a very significant moment. In fact, this prompting came from God for me personally on a prayer walk a little less than two years ago. There's this place in my neighborhood where I walk the streets and I'll pray and ask God to lead and guide. And even that first conversation came out of direction from God. And isn't it amazing in our lives when we say yes to God? that that yes to God opens so many doors. And I have loved during the season even watching so many of you continue to say yes to God's prompting in your life. We say here as a church, we exist to urgently lead people to say yes to Jesus and passionately follow him. And this whole series is about my, my yes, your yes back to God, a fresh yes to him. In fact, one other thing that happened to me on one of those prayer walks recently, not another prompting to 
pursue partnership with another church, but uh, there was this prompting that really spoke to me as I was walking past the basketball court. Now, God tends to give me images, and maybe this happens to you sometimes, where you see something and it strikes you. Maybe you've even seen it before, but it never hit you at a deeper level. I walked walk past the basketball court, and I realized that they had taken all the rims off of the backboards. Now, if you like basketball like me, I love to go out there with my kids. I'm even really excited this week that basketball season has been starting back up. And if you're excited, just put a basketball emoticon right there in the chat. Like if you're pumped about basketball season happening. Um, But I'm not really excited about the fact that there are no rims on the backboards in my neighborhood because I can't go out and play basketball with the kids. So this is actually what it looks like right now. You can go out there with the basketball. You can actually even run around with a basketball. You can throw a basketball at the backboard, but guess what? You can't score. You can't put it in the net. And isn't it true that this is what it feels like right now with life? That it is so hard to define what it means to be successful. Maybe you knew what it was like to be successful with your career previously. You knew how to win at work, and now you don't even go to work anymore. Maybe you knew what it was like to be successful at school and now you can't even concentrate for 15 minutes because your little sister is screaming every time you try to read a book for school. And you're wrestling through what does it mean to be successful? I've had conversations even with people in our church and volunteers and leaders and wrestling through what does it look like for followers of Jesus in the church to be successful in a season where the, the, the buildings are actually closed and people can't come into the buildings. How do we define success? I want to wrestle through that question, what does success look like when there is no scoreboard? When the scoreboard that you have relied upon, maybe even for decades of your life, has been stripped away from you. In fact, I believe that God has made you for success. God has designed you to live a fruitful life on purpose, on mission. And so many of us have relied upon the wrong things for our sense of purpose. And now we're running around. We're trying to find a new purpose. And maybe even in that, we're exhausted. Perhaps even for you, it's not exhaustion, but it's that you you feel apathetic. Like, why do I even need to get up out of bed? Stacy and I were driving this morning and we noticed as we're driving around town, there aren't quite as many cars on the road at eight or nine or even 10 o'clock. And Maybe you're sleeping in more and you're staying up later and you've lost that sense of purpose. I believe that God wants to reignite a flame inside of you, to put a passion deep within your soul, that it is possible, write this down, it is possible in every season to live with success. In every season of your life, it is possible to live with success. You just need the right definition. You need God's definition. And today, I want to redefine for you and for us as a church, what does it mean? Especially in this moment when Crossroads and Echo are coming together. I can't think of a better thing to focus on than our mission to understand why we're here and why you're here, that God designed you for a purpose. Matthew chapter 6, I want to just spend some time there because Jesus gives us a new scoreboard. In fact, you even see in this passage we're going to look at from Matthew chapter 6, uh, verses 24 through 33, you see that Jesus goes after all the things that we rely upon for success, our scoreboard. Notice in verse 24, I'm going to fly through this and kind of camp on verse 33. He says, no one can serve two masters. You know, it's, it's kind of like having two wives or two calendars. It's not a really good thing. God designed it for you to have one. Two husbands, it's not really a good thing. Um, it's, it's one master. Jesus said that you can't have multiple scoreboards. You need, you need one scoreboard, one focus for your life. He says, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. So he goes after the value system of the world with money, that so many people define their success by their income or their job, and maybe even that's been stripped. Your bank account's gone down. Your stock value has plummeted or diminished. And then Jesus helps us understand that if if that's your God, you're sorely disappointed right now. He continues and he says, that's why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food or drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food or your body or your clothes? You're trying to keep up with the Kardashians. You're trying for that eight pack that you've been looking for for 25 years and it's still not coming. 
and you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you're depressed, you got the wrong scoreboard, Jesus says. He says, look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns. Your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? You obsess over th these things, but at the end of it, you're more exhausted mentally and emotionally than you were before you started. And why worry about clothes? Look at the lilies of the field, how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon, in all of his glory, was not dressed as beautifully as they are. If God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today, thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. Maybe for you right now, your thoughts are dominated by your old scoreboard, by the thing that you used to look to for success. Jesus is about to give you a new aim, a new purpose for your life. He says this, your heavenly father already knows all of your needs. How many of you are grateful today that we have a God that knows every need we have? Every physical need, every emotional need, every relational need, every spiritual need that you have. And he cares about you more than you care about yourself. He cares about meeting those needs more than all of your efforts, more than all of your energy. He is actively working to care for you. So what should you care about? What should you focus on? Jesus tells you. He says this, seek the kingdom of God above all else. He doesn't give us a caveat here. He doesn't say, well, like when there's a plague, then stop with the kingdom. Or when there's a famine, think about food a little bit more. Jesus says that in every season, it is possible for you to live faithfully. In every season, it is possible for you to be successful. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other things that you need, God will take care of them. That is your new scoreboard. God sent me here today to encourage you because so many of you are living aimlessly right now. You're bouncing around, you're exhausted, and your exhaustion flows out of you trying to, in effort to get back to the old scoreboard. You're throwing the ball at the backboard and there's no rim there and you're exhausted. And he, he, he wants you today to see so clearly that when you and I begin to press in to his kingdom, his value system. What is his kingdom? God's kingdom is the place where Jesus is king. It's not a physical kingdom. It's not a building. It's not a nation. Some people say America is God's chosen nation, as if every other nation is not chosen by God. It's not a physical nation. It's, it, it is not a one-generation thing. It is multi-generational, multi-ethnic. It is God's kingdom where love and joy and peace and kindness emanates. It's where people experience life and purpose as God intended it to be experienced. It's a place where his face shines into darkness. It's the kind of community where people look at those around them who are broken and hurting and don't judge them, but they say, how do we communicate love in a way that our community knows that we are for them and not against them, that God is for them and not against them? That's the kingdom of God. And it's not stopped by COVID. It's not stopped by famine. It's not stopped by stock markets going up and down. It went through World War I and World War II and the Black Plague and seasons of time where people couldn't gather physically. It's outlasted persecution. It will move forward and it will continue until Jesus comes. And it is a mission worth giving your life to. So many people are saying, when's the church going to reopen? What I want to say today is the church is open. Go ahead and put it in the chat. We never closed. We never stop. This mission continues. It's been going and it will continue to go. There is nothing come hell or high water that will stop the kingdom of God and it is worthy of your life. So if you're aimless, if you're exhausted today, Jesus is inviting you into his mission that is standing that when businesses got closed and people lost frustration, one of my buddies said, man, I've been building a business for 10 years and it's taken away from me and everything I've been building is gone. And I want to empathize and with compassion say, I'm sorry if what you've been building in this world is gone. Perhaps in the midst of this, God's given you a new scoreboard. And God is saying, the scoreboard is my kingdom. 
Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, he re-emphasized this mission with his disciples right before he went back to heaven. And in Matthew 28, I want you to hear these words. They're called the Great Commission. After his resurrection, it says that Jesus came to his disciples and he said, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Now, what's interesting about this As Jesus is standing on a mountain, which is the same mountain that prophecies point to where he'll come back when he returns. And he goes and he puts in their hands the keys to the kingdom. These these men who abandoned Jesus at his moment of need when he was being crucified, now in this moment are going to become bold and courageous. Men and women of God filled up with his spirit with a mission, all because they've seen the resurrection and the spirit of God has come. And now Jesus is going to send them into the world. And he says, all authority has been given to me, therefore go. He doesn't say, therefore stay together and huddle and take care of one another. We'll take care of one another's good and we love each other. But there's a mission as you go, as you are going to take this message into all the world, baptizing people, disciples, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given to you and be sure of this. I am with you, Jesus says, into the very ends of the age. So we don't have to be in a building for God to be with us. We don't have to be gathered together physically for us to still be the church. We are the church because we are the people of God on mission with the good news of Jesus. And I want you to hear today, so importantly, the methods for our church have shifted. They've had to shift. The methods have changed, but the message has not. The the, the essence of what we do with our mission as a church has not changed. The methods are different, but the mission and the message are the same. What's the message? The message is that Jesus, the Son of God, came in human flesh, lived a perfect, sinless life, died on a cross for the sins of the world, making a way so that broken sinners like you and I can come back to the heart of God and have our past wiped clean, can be restored to relationship with one another and live in a community of love. That's the message. Because the tomb is empty, you can live with hope today. That's the message. It hasn't changed. The message is the same. And we stand together. What's the mission? We're going to do whatever it takes to get this good news to as many people as possible. 93% of people in our communities around North San Jose, South San Jose, Fremont with the Crossroads campus and Sunnyvale, 90 plus percent of the people around us are living with a hopeless eternity in front of them. There are homes that are broken. There's exhaustion in families. There are students on the brink of suicide. There are children that are growing up not knowing that they they are loved by God. Our mission and our, our message need to prevail during this season. And God is inviting you personally into his mission to not grow faint and weary of heart, but to stand into the gap. So we say one more time, we exist to urgently lead people to say yes to Jesus and passionately follow him. Can we say it even out loud together in your living room with your two-year-old? We exist to urgently lead people to say yes to Jesus and passionately follow him. I've been saying to our staff, we have two cars. Thank God we have two cars. Right now, my family actually is a one-car family. We've only needed one during COVID. But as a church, we're a two-car family. We've got one car called the digital church car, We got one church called the physical church car. We got all these buildings that God's blessed our church with. I actually drove by one of them the other day just to make sure it was still there. It was. Sunnyvale building is still there. And, um, but both of these cars, these cars, God bless them, help accomplish the mission. And there will be a time when COVID is gone and the physical car, the physical gathering of our church will happen again. In the meantime, the church is not closed. So if you hear any of your leaders or your staff say the church is closed, when's it reopening? Rebuke them. Say, Pastor Andy said to tell you the church is open. The physical gathering, that's the question, when's that going to happen again? Well, that car, right now, we physically, we can't gather with our church right now based upon many of the rules and regulations in our community. Guess what? That car's parked in the garage. So we're getting it ready. We're making sure that the tank is full and we're going to be ready to go. This other car is getting most of the gas right now. It's called Digital Church. Guess what? It is still a viable, it is a viable expression of the church. We've had over 500 people make first-time decisions to follow Jesus through church online. 
The, the kingdom of God is moving forward. Both of these cars matter. So we're going to give energy to them. So many people, they have re-engaged at a level that they never had with digital church because they feel safe. They can come in. They can ask their questions. Both of these are moving the mission of what God wants to do uh, move it forward. And the whole goal from the beginning has been to help people say yes to God and live passionately for him. So for our church, we have four yeses. And we can do these four yeses with a digital car. We can do these four yeses with a physical car. First one is your growth spiritually. That's the first yes. My yes to grow, to say, God, I'm, I want to know you This is when you begin a relationship with Jesus. This is where you get baptized. This is where you start spending time with him. That's next week. I want to encourage you to sign back in for that message next next weekend. Number two is connect. That's where we engage in community with each other. That's where we go deep and we study the Bible together and we pray and we encourage one another. And with our groups, our echo groups, this fall, we will have close to 200 groups across all four of our locations. You will have groups that will gather together um, for bike rides outside. We'll do social distance group. We'll do Zoom groups. We'll do all different types of groups to help you get connected. And I am so grateful for the 275 people that stood up this summer to host Hope Project groups. Thank you. There were so many lives that were transformed because of your yes to help people connect with each other and with God. In fact, many of you You've written yourself off as a potential host or a group leader. If you knew all these hosts and group leaders and what they're like, you wouldn't write yourself off. You'd step right up because you know, you'd see that God uses ordinary people like you and me to accomplish his kingdom purposes. And some of you today, you're going to step up and say, you know what? I'm going to be bold and courageous. In fact, on the check-in button, you can actually today say, I want to host a group this fall. That actually is the most important thing we're going to give attention to this fall is how many people are regularly connected into community. That yes is very, very important. The third yes is serve. That's what we'll talk about the following week, about using your gifts and talents. We're going to talk about how do you re-engage with your gifts in a digital reality? How do you re-engage with your time and your talents to make a difference? And then the fourth and final week is the echo of our lives. It's making a difference into the lives of other people. That's where we share God's good news and we invite people to church online. And that's where we talk about our resources and how God uses our money to accomplish his kingdom purposes. All of this is about our yes to God. Just because there are so many no's that you are getting in society that you can't do doesn't mean you can't say yes to God right now. You can say yes to God right now from a living room. You can say yes to God when you're driving in your car and pray, praying. You can say yes to God. to sir. All of the yeses are still true. In fact, um, the scripture said in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 that all of God's promises are yes and amen in Jesus. And so many of us are living our lives as though when will COVID stop? When will COVID be over? And what I want to say today so emphatically is we can't stop COVID, but we won't let COVID stop us. We won't let COVID stop the mission of God. We won't let COVID stop us living on purpose. We won't let this season define our response to God. We're going to give God our yes in spite of our season. I remember a time when I was sitting in a staff room in 2014. We had so many people that were like, this was the year our church, 2014 and 15, was, there was a period. It was the only season in our church's history that we weren't growing. And we had a lot of staff members. They were frustrated, disgruntled. We're having tough conversations. People were leaving left and right. Staff members were leaving. And I remember coming into the meeting and saying, there is a remnant in this room. And there are some of you that will choose to say yes and stay and hang in. And this will be a defining moment. And we will look back at this moment and we will see God have moved us forward. This church is moving forward. This is not going to stop us. The kingdom of God will prevail. God will build his church, and we are going to stay faithful. It's a defining moment. And I remember that moment because so many of those people, I thought people would walk out of the room, everybody hung in there. And it was like the moment, you know, it was the Braveheart moment. You know, it's like everybody's in. We're back in this thing. And I do believe God wants you to have one of those Braveheart moments right now that you would re-engage. Jesus said, listen to these words, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. 
Jesus made us a promise that is yes and amen. His kingdom is going to prevail. You need to hear me say this to you as your pastor. We will get through this. We're going to get to the other side of this. The kingdom of God is going to prevail. We are not a short-term church. We are a long-term. Hang in there with vision. For the next 25 years, we're going to be faithful to build the kingdom of God. And we're going to look back in 2045 and 2055 when so many of us look like the aging app, you know, and we're going to see the faithfulness of God have prevailed. We're going to see this region change. We're going to see churches within every community of the Bay Area. We're going to see the needle tip where the percentage has shifted, and you're going to be a part of it because of your yes right now to say to God, I'm back in. I'm not skipping church because I'm lazy anymore. I'm not going to forget about God. My yes is, is, is here. When it gets hard, we don't run for the hills, church. When it gets hard, we don't give up. I want you to hear this as it comes on the screen. When it gets hard, we don't run for the hills. We fight for our mission. So God is calling you, he's calling me, he's calling us to stand in there. Some of you, that fighting for the mission is getting back in on Sundays to say I'm going to be consistent. And oh, by the way, there's really no excuse now. We stream five times on Sunday and it's on demand all week. You got an hour for God to be encouraged. You can still hang in there with your time alone with Jesus. Some of you, it's recommitting. I'm going to read the Bible. I'm going to pray. Others of you, I'm going to get baptized. Right now, some of you are going to sign up to host a group to say, you know what? I'm going to go all in. I'm going to host a group. This is a beautiful moment with Echo and Crossroads coming together. I believe that God is calling us to a higher vision. God is calling us to believe him in faith that the best of what he has is in front of us. And there are thousands of you that are, that are looking into my eyes right now. And we're going to look back together at this. We are Echo Church. We are a church with a mission, with a vision that is bigger than any one of us. It's bigger than COVID. It's bigger than this season. And we're going to keep pressing forward. I love stories. Oh, by the way, I'm running out of time, but I got to tell you just a couple stories. I love stories about the hope boxes. We, we, under, we underestimated your yes to God. Six hundred hope boxes gone as people delivering into the community hope to people. I love the story of Sonia who she got a vision from God because Randy kept bothering her from Echo Kids saying lead a group. She said yes. Her computer was bad. She couldn't log in. So somebody from Echo Compassion who's trying to bless those in need decided that they would go out and buy a Chromebook. That Chromebook got delivered to her house by Ryan from our staff when it showed up. She didn't even realize it was going to be there so that she could log in and host a group for kids through Echo Kids. Thank you to all of you who invest in the next generation through Echo Students and Echo Kids. You matter. You matter to this mission. We're going to fight for you. We're going to fight for groups of teenagers and students and kids to keep reaching the next generation. Thank you to those of you who've hosted groups, the, the hundreds of you at the Crossroads campus that put together backpacks for City Serve so that literally thousands of underprivileged people in Fremont can be loved and served and cared for. Guys, the mission's going forward. COVID is not stopping us. We are on fire, and I believe that God is wanting to put a second wind in you right now. I've been praying for you, and the vision that I keep seeing is, is like when you, at the end of the day, you know, sometimes at the end of the day, you get a cup of coffee at like five o'clock because you know you got to put the kids to bed and you're like, I got my second wind. God wants to say to you today, he's going to give us a second wind. And Jesus said, you will receive power when my spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the un- ends of the earth. The spirit of God wants to breathe life into this vision, into you right now so that you would realize you can be successful in every season. You just need God's scoreboard. And today we're giving God our yes. We're giving God our amen. I want to invite the band right now to come forward, and we're going to take a moment. How many of you guys miss music behind the preaching? I do. I miss, I miss the spirit keys, what we call them here, that kind of move us emotionally. In fact, um, in the Old Testament, Elisha one time was prophesying, and he said, bring me a harpist because he knew that that music 
led us to a place emotionally to connect back to the heart of God. And this is a significant moment. We want to celebrate, and I want to invite right now, even in this moment, Pastor Paul and Pastor Karen to come to the stage with several of our council members from the Crossroads location and our trustees here uh, at Echo, and we're going to pray over and bless this moment. Stacy's going to come forward, so will you welcome them as they come to the stage right now? So this represents such a significant moment where we are together, our two churches are saying yes to God, to the vision that he has called us to, to reach the Bay Area for Jesus. As you saw earlier, this represents 25 years of faithfulness for Pastor Paul and Pastor Karen, and it represents, for those of you who are part of Crossroads, your obedience to Jesus, to say yes to him. And we honor you, we honor your sacrifices, Mission Springs, those who were a part of that church originally, your decision to say yes uh, to be a part of Echo is significant in this moment, and we believe that God has great things in store. So we want to bless this moment. We want to give you guys a gift here, um, some flowers, and um, Stacy doesn't have COVID, so if you touch them, you're not going to get it. But, um, and also, we, we wanted to send you guys on a um, getaway, the two of y'all, uh, to celebrate this moment to the Central Coast. Um, so we're going to send you guys away for three nights. Um, your staff at the uh, Crossroads campus will be excited, too, to get a little bit of a breather, um, and I'm sure you will as well. But we just want to honor you guys in this moment, your faithfulness, and we don't take lightly the obedience that you have displayed to Jesus to live faithfully. Everything that I just preached right here, you guys have lived for 25 years, and I'm just so excited about what God is going to do in the season together. And we want to invite um, several of our, our council members to pray. Uh, we have Michael over here, not to be mistaken with Michael Jordan. We have Darlene uh, back here who's going to pray. And then we have Tony here and David from the uh, trustees of, of ECHO as a whole. And so we're going to bless this moment. We all lead us in prayer. And then afterwards, I'll close this out. Father, I want to thank you for this day. I want to thank you for this opportunity to come before you, Lord. As we join as two churches into one, I want to just ask that you would be in the midst, Lord. Go before us. Continue to prepare our mind and our hearts, Lord, that we would accept this mission that you have before us, Lord. COVID will not stop. Echo, Lord Jesus. We're reaching out to the all the ends of uh, the Bay Area here, trying to help your people come into relationship with you. I ask that you'd move on everyone's hearts now, Lord. Mm -hmm. I ask that you would help us to accept the assignment you've given us and to be bold in our profession of our faith for you. Mm -hmm. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, mm -hmm. amen. Heavenly Father, I also want to thank you for this union that we get to celebrate today between Crossroads and Echo this union that you've clearly choreographed and we thank you for for being in this and giving us this opportunity and we thank you for all the people who have been faithful to the promptings of your spirit and have been working tirelessly for months to make this union a possibility with your help and we just ask now as we come together that you would continue to bless and protect Andy his family and all the Echo staff and leadership as we continue to push your kingdom forward into the Bay Area and around the globe. And we pray that as a church that we would continue to push forward with prayer, with gratitude, and with generosity, mm -hmm. and to maximize this resource that you've given to us, Father. Help us to be faithful. We thank you and we love you. Father, I thank you so much for this moment, for the obedience of Paul and Karen and the staff of Crossroads, that literally hundreds of people that have poured out their passion, their resources, their heart for decades. God, we honor them. We give them even celebration for their faithfulness. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would breathe a second wind into that campus. God, that you would breathe hope and life into the Fremont Crossroads area that many thousands of people would come to faith in you, Jesus, through this partnership that we have together. God, we bless this church. We believe that the greatest days are in front of us. We know that you are moving, and by faith, by bold faith, 
we believe that this obstacle that so many see as a reason that your kingdom can't move forward, it is the greatest opportunity in front of us right now. And we are seeing you do great things. And we cannot wait to watch you continue to move, even throughout this series, as we give you our yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, before we finish up, we would cue the confetti cannons, but we're going to do it digitally right now. So at all of our campuses, we got some music that will go. Let's, let's celebrate God's faithfulness today, this significant moment as we head back to our host. Hey there. Thanks for joining us again today. You know, as summer is wrapping up, it's just super important for us to process how God's going to use us in the next season. And one of the best steps you can take right now is to host or lead a virtual small group environment. Right now, this is a season where a lot of people are still feeling isolated, confused, disoriented, disconnected from others. We can be used by God to help reverse that and bring true community to people's hearts and lives. And I hope that you take the step to explore what it looks like to leverage your gifts, your abilities, your skills, your interests to lead or host one of these groups. It's never been easier to do it, by the way. If you host a group, all you do is you cr- there's a guide we give you that you can use to just uh, facilitate conversation in a virtual environment uh, that helps people grow toward God and each other. If you lead a group, you can also do this and do all kinds of other things. If you have an interest in leading a group that's more business oriented or leadership or recreational or targeted toward people that are married or young couples or parents that are struggling right now, maybe you have a heart for developing the hearts of children and you wanna lead a group for kids or for students, the next generation to rise up in faith, this is the time to do it. So as you pray, as you consider, if you wanna click here, go to echo.church slash group leader. Uh, This is where you can show the interest and take the steps forward to explore letting God use you in small group environments. By the way, a lot of these are gonna start becoming uh, groups that can meet in person at times, especially outdoor. So if you wanna mix it up a little bit and go hybrid, in person, virtual, that's another great way to make an impact. I hope you take the step. Hope today encouraged you. We'll see you back next time at Echo Church.